Simon, you idiot. Actually working, actually creating value. Oh yeah, I won't get that far. Actually making videos, you dummy. Mic check, mic check, Rage Shadow Legends, Legendary Legends. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Business Plays with I, your big brain leader, Simon. Backed boy. Boy with the blaze. Uh, this episode is brought to you by, as I always say, a brave new sponsor. Policy Genius. Policy Big Brain, you could say. But let's not say that because the brand is called Policy Genius and I don't want to have to do any reshoots. Policy Policy Genius. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. What, what? You could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. Over a grand a year. That is, a, that is no joke, Policy Genius. More about them in just a little bit. This video, uh, what happens here, Danny? writes me a script. I shall abuse the script, both physically and also through making bad jokes, just sprinkling them in there. Ah! And then Sam will sprinkle in some vintage meme! Daddy, chill. What is going on? I'm feeling really hyped this morning. I'm ready to get down with the blaze. Uh, this is called technical analysis, the pseudoscience of the finance world. Boy, I could have given that a better title, could I tell you? Maybe I have, because I want to be a little bit clickbait. It'd be good, like, the secret business secret you won't believe. Hot diggity dog. The technical analysis in my mind, like, I was looking at, you know, I often Wikipedia is a great source of where, what shall I make videos about? Let's look on Wikipedia, see what's interesting. And I was looking at, like, pseudoscience. Like, there's a whole page of pseudoscience things, and obviously that's a page that I really like to pull from. And one of them was technical analysis. And it's like a financial pseudoscience. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. So technical analysis, you know, looking at charts and being like, oh, it's going up, it's going up, it's going down, it's going down. Bit, 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 buy, I sell low. Fuck you, science. All this shit. Apparently it's a pseudoscience. And I was like, that is mad. Because uh, they make it look really professional. <laughs> Apparently it's all a lie. Let's jump in. I'm not convinced this is the most gripping clickbait title we've ever slapped onto a Business Blaze video. I don't read these ahead. Danny, you legends. I did try shoving words like cocaine and conspiracy theory into the mix, but I just couldn't get it to fly. Yeah, also, you know, Florida man you could throw in there. Technical analysis. The Florida man of the finance world. Makes no sense, but it's definitely more clickable. If that's the title you clicked on, I apologize. It's got nothing to do with Florida man. Welcome to Business Place. So that was a fucking lie. So you've clicked on this video purely on the strength of the title. I salute your stoicism and intestinal fortitude. To be honest, I assumed at first that the carrier pigeon had just delivered the wrong topic title again, as this one seems to be all about business. What? That certainly come out of left field. Yeah, originally this channel was about business. We used to cover business topics. And then it just went like really downhill. Or uphill, depending on if you like Business Place. You probably do. You're watching. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. And it can be a challenge to strike the right balance when writing about the stock market. It's very easy to get complicated and involved very quickly. I'm sure that many business players viewers have first experience of trading on the stock market, but unless you personally lost $10,000 on a poorly judged investment in Whistler Cryogenics Limited, Danny, there is no such thing as a poor investment in Whistler Cryogenics Limited. Help Simon live forever. Dragon, grant me immortality. Yes, I've done it. I'm finally the strongest in all the universe. <laughs> I'm unstoppable. Uh, it's just understa it's understandable that you might lose the plot in a script weighed down with technical technical jargon and gobbledygook and stock market jibber jabber. Let's try so let's try and boil down today's subject to the basic elements. Technical analysis is a controversial methodology for forecasting the direction of stock market prices using a variety of algorithmic trading tools and take technical indicators, including Japanese candlestick chop. Oh my god, I'm so lost already. <laughs> <laughs> Elliott wave theory, Fibonacci curves, moving wedge formations, dead cat bounces, Venusian karate, and stochistic oscillators. Now, if I didn't know that a dead cat bounce was actually a real thing, I'd be like, Danny's just making up words. I've, I, I haven't heard of most of these, but I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> oh my god, stop fucking lying. Some say that technical analysis is the holy grail of stock market trading, while others suggest it's the financial world's version of astrology, i.e. it's a crock of sh**. Apparently Wikipedia agrees, because they listed it on the pseudoscience page. And that's about it, really. We could probably just leave it at that and go for an early bath. Sweet. I am done! 
Not really, not really. I gotta get paid. We gotta have at least 17 more minutes of rambling. There's gonna be words from our glorious sponsor policy genius so I can afford to live. But, but such things as this. Well, if you really want to dive in a little more detail, oh boy, do I, Danny. The audience are chomping at the bit for more facts about technical analysis. How high does that dead cat bounce, Danny? I remember when I spent a brief period of time day trading on the stock market. It was an old work colleague who first got me hooked on the idea, and he reckoned that it hit upon the perfect system. I remember there was a, it, I don't know if it, I don't, maybe it was based on the real market. It was like a stock market trading simulation. And I was like, all right, I'll give that a go. I was a student, plenty of time to kill. And it gave you like 10,000 fake dollars and you could trade on the stock market. And I was like, okay, let's play this game. And I was doing really well. I'm like, oh my God, I'm really good at this. It's actually working out. Like a month goes by and it's like I double my money. And I'm like, Shit, do I have some sort of gift? And it's like, no, no, no. It's just, you can go out for a while. Not anymore, you don't, poof. And then it was like one day I just lost it all. <laughs> it's like, okay, I see how this works. I see how this works. I'm not good at anything. The obvious challenge when trading on the stock market is figuring out which stock prices are likely to rise in the near future and which are most likely to fall, giving you a clear idea of what exactly to invest your money on. Yeah, Danny. If anyone, if anyone could figure that out, we'd all be billionaires. Unfortunately, it seems that basically no one can. My old colleague system was very easy and didn't require much effort. He just spent a bit of time each day browsing through a stack of online message boards to see which stocks were generated rating of buzz. The mood often got very excitable on those message boards. There would always be one or two stocks which would send the boards into meltdown as everyone came out with phrases like, this one's got double bagger written all over it, the money train is getting ready to pull into the station, and I wouldn't want to be the poor idiot that misses out on this one. STOCKS! And did it work? No. Well, surprisingly, my old colleague did arrive on his first few trades, but he soon realized that this wasn't a very effective long-term strategy. Yeah, I do none of this stuff, and I have no interest in this. I believe the statistic is in like 99% of people lose money day trading, and look, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm 100% certain I'm not gonna be in that 1% of wizards because like over the long term, because I'm just not that good. I'm not a wizard Hagrid, I'm just Harry. I just put my money in investment, in stock market index funds, where it's just like, it's just tied to the whole market and over time the market just always goes, I mean, of course it goes down, but over like decades it always goes up and I'm like, brilliant. <laughs> and I have to do no work every month. I transfer a bunch of money off into this like stock market brokerage accounts and I allocate it to these index funds which are incredibly low fee because I don't need anyone taking a percentage to do that for me. And uh, boom, money in the bank, sometimes it goes down. I'm like, oh my God, I lost a lot of money today, but I don't care because overall I'm gonna make loads of money, hopefully. <laughs> unless that whole world melts down. So possible. The problem is that most of these people hyping up certain stocks and getting everyone into a lather are very quite probably trying to encourage a flood of new investment so the price would shoot up and they could get rid of their own stocks at a profit. What? That's a pump and dump scheme. Uh, the classic pump and dump scheme. Danny and I! I know that because of Wolf of Wall Street. So I decided that a better system was needed and I set my sights on fundamental analysis. This involves trying to gauge the intrinsic value of a company. This is Warren Buffett's strategy and He's actually, he's, he's the big exception. This involves trying to gauge the intrinsic value of a company by examining their business metrics, revenue, earnings, debts, new developments, internal management, oh my God, I'm lost already. And even, so you analyze a business. <laughs> and even external environmental factors such as potential competitors and the demand for the product or service. All of that sounds extremely complicated. Can't we just look at the charts and be like, I went down, it's gonna go up. <laughs> Why look at the fundamentals of a company? Why look at that when you can just go online and see what's being hyped up? <laughs> I used to spend all day poring through financial documents and company statements and news stories and business articles just to try and get a grip on which direction the stock was heading. It obviously took more time and dedication, but I felt happier that I was properly doing my homework instead of just following the message board sheeple. The only problem with fundamental analysis is that it doesn't really work either. I plowed a stack of money into one particular stock, which felt I, which I felt utterly convinced was going to rise, and instead it sank like a bucket of bricks. Well, that just means it doesn't work for you, does it, Danny? I mean, Warren Buffett would be like, yo, it works for me. Although I think Warren Buffett is like, don't do this, just invest in index funds. And he's like the exception that made it work. And now you're reeling from the bonus kick in the teeth that you've just spent all week wasting your time on studious research that ended up losing you money. But maybe there's another way. The appealing thing about the alternative method of technical analysis is that despite the daunting name, it sounds like a piece of piss in comparison. You don't need to bother with all that research. You don't need to dig up all the details on cash flow and earnings and all that trivial nonsense. <laughs> cash flow, earnings, <laughs> who needs that? In fact, you don't even need to be aware of what exactly the company is meant to be doing. Whether they're digging for oil near the north slope of Alaska, or building space rockets designed to fly to the planet Nibiru, OGPB, the matter is completely irrelevant. Instead, these 
technicians are concerned only with analyzing market trends and price patterns, so you won't find these traders interrupting their busy schedule with intensive research, but you will find them drawing lots of pretty charts and graphs to help them accurately predict the future. But is there any merit to this method? Or can it just be dismissed as financial pseudoscience? It's not true. It's bullshit. Oh, hi, Mark. We have Charles Dow to blame for the rise of technical analysis, even though he never actually recommended using his own Dow theory as a stock market strategy. It's like Warren Buffett, like, yeah, 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 this is what I do. Don't do that. You're not as good as me. It's like, tell it like it is, Warry B. Many others uh, built and expanded upon the roots of his theory since, but it was Charles Dow who founded the Wall Street Journal in 1889. Wow. And it was in this very publication that Charles first began sharing his ideas that stock market trends and patterns could be measured. To help prove his point, he went on to crea create the Dow Jones Industrial Average in 1896, now more commonly simply known as the Dow, which is still measuring the performance of 30 of the world's largest companies today. In doing this, Charles opened the floodgates to the new field of technical analysis, but he sadly never even managed to publish his complete theory before his death in 1902. And it's possible that he wouldn't have been entirely happy with how his pioneering initial work evolved and mutated over the years into one of two basic types of trading now recognized recognized by U.S. regulatory authorities. The main focus of technical analysis is on studying statistical trends, trading signals, and changes in price and volume to pick out predictable patterns which indicate where the price is likely to be headed next. So predicting the future. One of the main principles of Charles Dow's original theory is quite a biggie, and that's that the stock market is efficient. All of the company fundamentals, along with all the other publicly available factors, have been factored in to the current price. In other words, you can spend as much time as you'd like getting bogged down in fundamental analysis, but you're only ever going to reach a point where the, uh, where, which the market has already arrived. The market has already carried out the fundamental analysis on your behalf, and so you're not going to gain even the tiniest advantage by following in their footprints. You're certainly not going to gain any insight into the future, which has not already been factored in by the market. But I guess the thing is, what if there are things like the market isn't perfectly efficient, so there are things that people do find that are public, because otherwise it's definitely illegal. <laughs> uh, it's called insider trading, I believe. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, we, we don't do that here. The second principle behind the theory is that stock market prices move in short, medium, and long-term trends. A stock price is more likely to continue a past trend than it is to move erratically. Stock market prices not moving erratically? Pretty sure erratic moves on the stock market are oh, something that happened. Fairly sure I read about that in the news. Fake news. The third and final principle is that history has a tendency to repeat itself. True, price movements can be repetitive in nature, and this is attributed to market psychology, which is often based on very human emotions such as fear or excitement. These emotions can be studied and analyzed to chart patterns and predict trends on where exactly market psychology will be leading the stock market tomorrow and beyond. And because this episode is not broken down into sections, I've just decided that now is where we're going to have our ad read for Policy Genius. There's no neat transition because this is all one big glorious topic. Look, here's the thing. If you're alive right now, which I'd like to think you are because you're watching this video, if not, it's cool as an afterlife and it's cool I have YouTube. Ah! Look, if you've got family members who depend on your income, you need life insurance. I actually completely agree with this. Policy Genius is not something that I can use because I don't live, as I say for a few of our other sponsors, I don't live in the land of the brave and the home of the great something. Look, America. I don't live in America, so I can't access Policy Genius and look at different life insurance policies and save myself, what was it? Like a grand something? Yeah, $1,300 per year, which sucks because I looked, I've, I've gone through the hassle of figuring out life insurance here where I live in Prague, Czech Republic. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a massive hassle. It's super expensive. There's no good comparison websites. Why Policy Genius? Look, I need you to expand internationally, all right? Because this was a huge hassle for me. But I do believe that life insurance is pretty important because you don't want to pop off and then your family, like, it happens. Like, people die young. Sad reality of life, I'm afraid. And then you don't want your family to be like, oh, we're kind of in the sh aren't we? And life insurance can, uh, it's actually, can be surprisingly affordable. But look, life insurance naturally costs more as you get older, that makes sense, because the reality is the older you get, the more likely you are to die. <laughs> ah! Oh, this ad read is terrifying. Getting covered locks in your rate as it is. Over the course of a 10 or 20 year policy, those savings can add up. Of course they do. Like, it, I'm 33 right now. In 20 years, I'll be 53. Look, the price of me getting a policy at 53 is gonna be way higher, because they're gonna be like, yo, you could get diseases and 
now. I'm like, of course I can get diseases at 33, but it's less likely. How does it work? Ooh, how does it work? I don't actually know because I can't use this. Head to policygenius.com to get started. In minutes, you work out how much coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to get your best price. When you're ready to apply, go to the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and the scheduling for free. Oh my God, the paperwork is- I had to have meetings and and sign documents. Why? Policy Genius, this is where it's at. And since our licensed experts work for you, not the insurance companies, you can trust them to give unbiased advice. That's another thing here. It was like, yo, um, like this is not something like, I grew up in the UK. This is like the financial services authority, something that regulates financial professionals here. It's a bit of a joke because I'm like, wait, you're offering all these different ones. Are you getting a kickback from these? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you didn't have to pay me, but they pay me. And I'm like, that sounds ripe for abuse. <laughs> Policy Genius never sells your information to other companies. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. Mwah! You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. That is fantastic. I wish I could have this. Look, don't put it off. Life insurance is a thing. Like, if you've got kids, it. Like, get on it, all right? Because look, people pop off and you don't you don't want to leave your, your kids being like, oh shit. The three core principles, <laughs> that dark ad read, <laughs> over, let's move on. The three, don't put all your money in like, I'm gonna get into technical analysis and trading. I don't need an insurance, life insurance policy. I'm gonna be rich trading stocks, woo, to the moon. These three core principles that we talked about before the ad break have helped to shape hundreds of different techniques and strategies, which all fall under the quite vague umbrella of technical analysis. For example, the art of creating Japanese candlesticks. I believe that's the chart where they're all like, you know, there's the squares and they're green and red. Involves plotting the history of price movement using a visual representation of candlesticks to chart a stock's highest, lowest, open and closed prices in a bid to tease out a trend line from the data. Exponential moving averages are a weighted average of a stock price over a set period of time, which places more importance on recent history to create a dynamic trend line which is responsive to fresh information. And dead cat bounces are based on the theory that a stock, stock suffering a steep and rapid decline will inevitably see a brief and temporary recovery along the journey before resuming its downward spiral in much the same way that even a dead cow's cat will bounce a little bit if dropped from a great height. Indeed, a cat can survive. Like, they enter terminal velocity really fast, they flip around and they land. Like, m uh, many cats have survived. In fact, I believe I could say that most cats survive falls from skyscrapers. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. I'm not sure if that's true about a dead cat or if it's been scientifically proven on any level. I would imagine that a dead cat would just kind of splatter on the ground if tossed off the top floor of the Empire State Building. Oh yeah, wait, if he's dead. <laughs> he's dead before you throw it out, of course, it's not gonna work. I'm so stupid, I'm so s small brained. Uh, I think that maybe it had a better chance of killing a pers passing pedestrian than a falling penny though, OGBB. Uh, there are naturally tons of other strategies and indicators that we could spend all day discussing, such as Bollinger Bands, McClellan Summation Indexes, and Vortex Indicators. Fascinating. But the basic approach is pretty much the same every time you drop. Fancy graphs and charts and then start getting excited when certain lines begin to converge or recognizable patterns occur. <laughs> sell! 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 Business! So, does any of this actually work? No. While well, some people swear by it, it's not just the new age traders who adopt these strategies. Investment banks and hedge funds also make use of technical analysis, and there is a long list of genuinely successful traders who are happy to report that they made their fortunes purely on the strength of technical analysis. But there are a few points to consider here. For starters, if technical analysis was guaranteed to work every time, everybody would be doing it, which would lead to a paradoxical situation in which everyone becomes a winner, but then nobody becomes a winner because the stock market already knows how everyone is going to invest. Ah, yes. <laughs> Literally the proof right there that this doesn't work for most people. On those occasions when technical analysis does appear to work, it could just be a case of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, like people who won the lottery are gonna be like, play the lottery. Successful YouTube is gonna be like, get onto YouTube. Doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. If enough people are using the same techniques to generate the same forecasts, they're all likely to buy or sell at the same time, forging the very result that was indicated in the research, regardless of whether it originally had any merit or not. Here's another thing. A lot of traders get suckered in by online advertisements and, market email, and marketing emails from companies encouraging you to quit your job and invest in their new technical analysis system, which promises big results with very little risk. Yeah, there's a company that I won't name because I don't want to get sued, but they advertise a lot on YouTube, and it's like, get into our stock trading platform, you know? 
just copy what the smart people are doing. You'll be rich. And it's like, yo, yo. If people really were getting rich from using this, you wouldn't need to advertise, would you? Because my friend Peter would be like, oh, Simon, you get a good on this. I'm just doing this. I quit my job, driving a Lambo, <laughs> living the life. <laughs> Simon, you idiot. Actually working, actually creating value. No, yeah, I won't get that far. Actually making videos, you dummy. Just get onto this unnamed trading platform which advertises all over YouTube with celebrities. Unnamed. You know what it is. You know what it is. That's how you get rich. Not really. Don't do that. They're probably advertising on this video even though I didn't name them. Hello! But if it really worked, why would they even bother doing that? Surely they'd be better off just utilizing their own amazing system rather than trying to sell it to you. Yes, f***ing preach. Like, yo, 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 yo. Look, if you've come up with some magical way of making money, if you've actually figured out something, like some genius dead cat system that is literally making you tons of money, you don't need to sell, tell, tell anyone else how to do it. If anything, shut the f*** up. Don't tell anyone and lie about where your money came from. <laughs> okay? Okay? All right, then. Keep your secrets. Okay. However, perhaps the biggest flaw with the whole concept of technical analysis is that the universe probably isn't ruled by numbers and patterns in the way these strategies suggest. Yeah, everything is way more random than you think. Always remember that. Years and years ago, I spent an evening at a Greyhound racing track in Shepherd. It's not something I'm likely to do again, as I've gathered since then that the sport is linked with animal cruelty. Besides, I always thought it was a shame that the Greyhounds never caught the fake mechanical rabbit that they were chasing. But back then, in my ignorance, I ended up making quite a bit of money that night from gambling on the Greyhounds, whilst in contrast, my mate lost every single bet. Maybe I was just enjoying a slice of beginner's luck. Or maybe it's because I was taking a minute to slowly study the betting guides and find the greyhounds which got round the track in the fastest time over the most recent races and then just chose that one every time. I thought this was a pretty effective system. Certainly a lot better than my mate system which was rooted entirely in numbers. You figured that a greyhound wearing a vest bearing the number which hadn't won for a while was most likely to win on the law of averages. Your friend is a bit of a dim dim and doesn't understand the law of averages. Or basic logic. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's a bit like people who choose lottery numbers that haven't popped up in a while on the strength that they must surely be due another appearance in a long uh, absence. It's complete codswallop. That's the gambler's fallacy. Is that right? Like, oh my god, the blackjack thing has been black eight things in a row. It must next be red. No, 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 no. Same chance. Same. I know there are people popping off in the comments being like, Simon, but it's come up seven times in a row. <laughs> what do you think the chance of coming up an eighth time are? And it's like, the f***ing same as the last times is basic mathematics. Everyone reading your comments who isn't as dumb as you is thinking you're dumb. In a similar kind of way, the stock market isn't covered by magic numbers or tea leaf reading or voodoo or candlestick charts. I'm sure there is probably some value in assessing the relationship between price and volume on the stock market, and I'm sure that certain stocks do develop predictable habits from time to time as they react to predictable trader actions. Yet still, the ultimate problem faced by all traders is that the stock market, very much like real life, is unpredictable. Although the market is largely efficient and has a reasonable idea of what it's doing, it still gets taken by surprise by events that nobody could see coming. But when a share price does shoot up or dramatically decline, and it's often due to completely inscrutable circumstances which could never be predicted by either fundamental analysis or technical analysis. It's certainly not something that could ever have been revealed by looking at the changing shapes of a few candlesticks on a chart. Your best bets, and I mean that quite literally, as if we're being honest, stock market trading is pure and simple gambling, is just to find a promising stock which is currently valued quite reasonably and then patiently hold on to them for a while. Maybe even just forget about them, checking on the prices every few years to see if they've made you a billionaire yet. It's a good strategy as any. They're not going to make you a billionaire, but just putting the money in the stock market, like those nice, stable stocks, preferably in an index fund, could well make you a millionaire. Probably will make you a millionaire if you just invest a little bit of money and you keep the stocks until you retire. So do that, okay? I would still clear of the fear it's not going to make you a billionaire, though. So that was a fucking lie. I would steer clear of the field of technical analysis which is now largely developed into little more than a fertile ground for scammers who are determined to persuade you to put your faith into their quasi-religious and mystical systems. As Bond expert Martin Fridgson puts it, the only thing we know for certain about technical analysis is that it's possible to make a living publishing a newsletter on the subject. And American investor Peter Lynch is equally unimpressed. He says technical analysis charts are great for predicting the past. But my favorite quote comes from Warren Buffett. Ah, oh, Warry B! The legend himself. An who surely knows a thing or two about the market. If you remember, this was a guy who once threw away $200 billion on an act of petty revenge against the guy who crossed him. 
<laughs> Lesson there. Don't cross Warren Buffett. When revealing why he gave up the concept of technical analysis, Warren says, I realized it didn't work when I turned the chart upside down and I didn't get a different answer. <laughs> oh shit, Warren! Thank you for everybody for watching. This episode was brought to you by Policy Genius. Thank you to them. There is a link below to check it out. And as always, thank you for watching.